So I picked at this pair of new old stock Hanover George boots off eBay. And even though they're new old stock, there's kind of a process to conditioning them and getting them in shape to be worn. So the first thing I did is I cleaned them off. They were pretty dusty. They've been in storage for a while. And there's kind of a misnomer that if it's new old stock, it must be brand new. But any shoe that's been sitting for a while is going to get dirty. And the leather is going to get worn. So you may not always have to clean them with a leather cleaner like I'm doing here. But uh, if they're dirty, there's a lot of dirt in them, uh, you may want to do that before you condition them. So right now I'm just trying to get them all cleaned off. They had some uh, dirt spots on them. Um, looks like they've been sitting for a while without a box, without a dust bag. So you can see there the soles. Uh, they've never been worn, but they have a little scuff because they've been probably tried on here and there. So when you're done uh, cleaning them off, you just uh, I usually just wipe them off with with a clean uh, towel. Actually, what I'm using here is an, is an old, uh, really soft T-shirt that uh, belonged to somebody, and uh, it's just good for getting some of the um, you know, excess uh, soap off or, or water. You just don't want to let them uh, stay wet uh, when you condition them. You want to make sure that they dry, which is going to be really important. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about these boots. This is the George boot. It's the style of boot. It's called a country dress boot. It's made by Hanover Shoe Company, which was a really popular uh, shoe company here in the United States. It's currently it's no longer in business, uh, but they made pretty nice shoes. And the the leather here is uh, from the Freudenberg uh, tannery. This is Hera calf skin. And actually that tannery doesn't exist anymore. And so what you're looking at here is a pair of boots from a shoe company that no longer exists made of leather from a tannery that no longer exists. And so this is a real piece of history that we're looking at. And some people will see this, see this sense of history and think that perhaps since they've never been worn, they should be kept, you know, as kind of a museum piece. But I really do believe that when they were making these boots, they were meant to be worn and somebody wanted them to be worn. And part of the beauty and art of shoes is in that they're worn. So what I'm doing now is I am conditioning them so they can be worn again. Another thing you may want to do when you get a pair of new old stock is, is clean the welt uh, and the soles of the shoes. So I'm using just a toothbrush. There are welt brushes, but I'm using an old toothbrush. And I got some Lexol uh, cleaner, leather cleaner. Mix it in with the, um, with the water. And you can see it's an old Saphir uh, Renovateur. Um, container there that I, I keep water in sometimes. They're actually pretty good for doing stuff like that, mixing dyes. And so you kind of brush very softly and slowly along the wall that's stitching there. And what you want to do is you're trying to clean that stitching off. These particular boots, they were a little bit sticky. Uh, I don't know where they were stored or who had them before. But the welts themselves were a little dirty, they were sticky, they had uh, some sort of gunk on them. Uh, what I didn't put in the video is I, I took a little bit of Goo Gone to some parts of the sole and rubbed it on there to kind of get this gum or glue off of them. There was something stuck on there. And so when I saw that I thought I, I may want to go ahead and clean both the soles and the uh, in the welt before I decide to condition them. I wanted to get them uh, nice and clean, uh, so when you put the conditioner on it, uh, it would get to the leather 
And these are leather soles, so I want to make sure that they're conditioned well. So for sometimes when you're getting any vintage shoes, I think it's always a good idea to, to clean the welt uh, with, a, with a toothbrush. Uh, before this, you can brush it with a, a welt brush. And uh, another thing that I've done also is uh, instead of a um, Mano toothbrush, and this is a, a new toothbrush by the way, I, I, I have it specially for this, is uh, to take the head of a Sonic Care and use it. So if you see that, there's a lot of dirt there in that welt. And that's really just from sitting there. These had not been worn before. So again, I think the key is just because it's been sitting in this new old stock doesn't mean that it's, it's not dirty. And so when you're done with that, I wipe it gently with a, a soft cloth and get the welt nice and clean. And I think I think it's pretty pretty clean after I'm done here. So I'll let you kind of look at the rest of this process here uh, before we get to conditioning. So the next step is to condition with leather conditioner. You can see I'm using something called Big Four. It's a kind of leather conditioner. I use this and I use mostly Saphir Renovateur. It's another product when I condition pretty much any of my shoes or, or boots. And you can see I'm using just an old um, piece of shirt uh, cloth there. I don't really use any special uh, equipment there as my conditioning rag. I just cut up some old tea, cotton t-shirts and they work great. They work just as well as anything else uh, you can buy. But I think it's really important that when I'm uh, conditioning it that I take my time. I try to get every part of the leather because again it's been, it's been sitting for a while and it's kind of stiff and what I really don't want to do is try to wear them too early before the condition the uh, leather starts to get good and conditioned and supple and softer as I go on in the video and when I finished with this actually I can feel that the leather got noticeably softer the more that I conditioned it and since this is a George boot too and a monk strap I make sure that that is nice and conditioned but it really helps just to take your time and make sure you're getting every every part of the leather that you possibly can when you're conditioning any of your shoes, but especially a never been worn pair of vintage shoes. So another thing that I just want to point out is that I tried to leave this video as unedited as possible. I, I did cut it here and there uh, because it either I accidentally had a spray bottle in the way of me cleaning something, which uh, was not intentional. Uh, but I want you to see the time it takes to do this. I spent probably about half an hour minimum on these shoes, and I think this is gonna turn out to be maybe a 12, 13 minute video. But I do take my time with it, and I think it's important that when we're conditioning our shoes that we see it as a marathon and not a sprint and so conditioning your shoes can become kind of a meditative experience but some points you go through that you know you touch the leather you see how it feels you see uh, the condition it gets into and you pay attention to the various parts of the shoe and I like to use my fingers. Some people don't use a rag for this part. They just use their bare fingers. But I prefer to use a rag because if you see parts of the video that there is black coming off of it. And I guess it's just me. I don't want a bunch of black stuff on my fingers. Uh, I love my shoes, but still, I prefer not to do that. And so, uh, the one thing I will point out is that I didn't show it in this video, but I did end up conditioning them a second time uh, the next day with uh, Saphir Renovateur. 
So I did it twice because when I was done, I did not like the way that the leather felt uh, when I when I was done the first time. So I went ahead and gave him another round of conditioning. And so that's what I did. So what I'm doing here in this last part is I just went back over the shoes just to make sure I got every piece with um, the conditioner. And so I did. With Big Four, you can be a little bit more liberal with how much you put on it. Uh, but when I used the Saphir Renovateur, I used kind of dime size blots in different areas. You don't need a lot of it. So just remember uh, not to use too much conditioner. That less is more. So after conditioning, you wait at least five minutes and brush with a horsehair brush. Now in this case, I actually waited four hours to let it set in, but for some people, they think you should wait at least 24 hours. So if you really feel like the leather is stiff and hasn't been taken care of in a while, it doesn't hurt if you let it sit for 24 hours to kind of let it get into the leather more and then brush it after that. Um, if you see what I'm doing there, I actually have two kinds of brushes. One is a um, horsehair brush and a pig bristle brush. The pig bristle brush is a little stiffer. I just use it in a couple areas where I thought it might need a little more um, brushing. But once you brush it, you'll, all, you'll start to see that the leather will start shining, it'll start to come back to life, and this happens when you, when you brush it. I really encourage you to take your time when you brush after conditioning. Um, I think what I really do is, is make sure that I am brushing off any excess conditioner that might be on there. And you see that differently with different shoes. But I always like to make sure that I'm brushing as much as I can to kind of get more luster and shine out of the shoes. And again, I'm not high shining the shoes. Uh, you don't see me using cream polish or wax. This is just conditioner. But I think it is important that we are making sure that you're just brushing as much as you possibly can out of the leather. One optional thing you can do is use a flannel cloth to kind of buff it a little bit. I use this more with shining than I do with conditioning, but I'm doing a little bit here to get some luster. So that's it. That's how you condition new old stock vintage shoes thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel and good luck conditioning your own shoes